Norman Mailer died at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York on November 10th, 2007, at the age of 84. He had just published On God, his 40th book. He was buried in the Provincetown Cemetery at the tip of Cape Cod. On April 9th, 2008, at the Norman Mailer Memorial at Carnegie Hall in New York City, the trustees of the Mailer Estate announced the formation of the Norman Mailer Writers' Colony. It is their intention to use Norman Mailer's house in Provincetown, Massachusetts, as the headquarters for a nonprofit writing workshop and colony for students, writers, and scholars from all over the world. This endeavor would honor Mailer's lifelong interest and commitment to writers and writing programs. No career in modern American letters has been at once so brilliant, varied, controversial, and productive as that of Norman Mailer. Among the most influential writers of the second half of the 20th century, Mailer achieved fame at an early age with his first book, The Naked and the Dead, in 1948. And by the time he won his second Pulitzer Prize for the Executioner Song in 1980, he was often referred to as the American Tolstoy. Few American writers matched Mailer's intelligence and intensity, and none have written on such a high level in so many genres and on such varied subjects. Mailer wrote a dozen novels, 20 works of nonfiction, a few stage plays, screenplays, and television miniseries, hundreds of essays, two books of poetry, and a collection of short stories. Novelist Joan Didion said of his work, there was no voice like his, calling him a great and obsessed stylist. Time Magazine noted, for a heady period, no major public event in U.S. life seemed quite complete until Mailer had observed himself observing it. Mailer began his writing career as a student at Harvard in 1939. After graduating in 1943, he reported for duty in the Army. In January 1945, Mailer landed on the Philippine island of Luzon, where he began taking notes that would become the basis for his novel, The Naked and the Dead. On May 2, 1946, he was released from the Army, and he began writing in a bungalow on a deserted expanse of beach outside Provincetown on Cape Cod. For the next six decades, Mailer would regularly return to Provincetown to write. He wrote some or all of 30 books there, becoming a part of the town's cultural heritage. Provincetown had become for him what Key West and Cuba had become for Hemingway. In 1990, Mailer made Provincetown his permanent home, becoming what the locals call a year-rounder. It was the dream of Mailer and his wife, Norris, that their home not be lost to history. It is located on the water and looks out on the curve of shore of Provincetown Harbor. Boston is less than two hours away by car and is also accessible by ferry and plane. Mailer's third floor study, where he wrote many of his major works since 1975, remains as he left it. Mailer understood the importance of the written word and devoted his life to it. He attended writers' conferences, he met with young writers, and he encouraged them to be the best writers they could be. Let us never assume, he said, there is not more and more and more and more and then more to write about. The vision of the colony will be as wide and as varied as Mailer's vision as a writer. The estate has established an advisory board to oversee the activities of the writer's colony and address policy issues. The advisory board members include Mrs. Norris Church Mailer, co-executor of the estate, Sam Radin, co-executor and attorney at law, J. Michael Lennon, Mailer's biographer, Lauren Schiller, Mailer's collaborator on five works and a colleague, Thomas Staley, a noted Joyce scholar and the director of the Harry Ransom Humanities Research Center at the University of Texas at Austin. An honorary board of writers has been assembled to serve as advisors to the colony. The initial writers are 1999 Nobel laureate Gunter Grass, National Book Award winner Joan Didion, and two Pulitzer Prize winners, William Kennedy and Doris Kearns Goodwin. In support of the educational mission of the colony, it is proposed that the Harry Ransom Center at the University of Texas at Austin, which houses Mailer's extensive archive, will consult with the advisory board and collaborate with the colony. One of the world's leading repositories for the papers of 20th and 21st century writers, the center will also support exhibitions of Mailer's work and the work of other major writers at the Writers' Colony and other venues in Provincetown. A number of other universities and institutions plan on working with the Colony and the Ransom Center to develop lecture series, seminars, and other programs. Local nonprofit institutions have also expressed interest in forming collaborative agreements with the Mailer Colony. 
Among them are the Provincetown Theater, Mrs. Mailer serves on its board and was its artistic director for two years, the Fine Arts Work Center, the Norman Mailer Society, and the Pilgrim Monument and Provincetown Museum. The Mailer Writers' Colony will be designed to facilitate a balance between a focus on individual work and a forum for discussion among writers. There will be fellowship and residency programs, summer workshops, a visiting writers series, panel discussions and public readings, publishing and editing workshops, and classes and seminars in all genres of creative writing. Private rooms will be available to writers 24 hours a day, along with the communal dining and recreation rooms at the Mailer House, providing an environment adaptable to each individual's needs. In the evening, occasional readings and presentations will be an elective part of the stimulating and supportive environment. These readings and discussions will allow colonists to become acquainted with and inspired by one another's work. Friendships established among writers and residents could lead to collaborations and connections beyond the colony. Young writers will be able to attend workshops and each year a national award will be given in Mailer's name for outstanding work in nonfiction. To make the vision real, the Norman Mailer Writers Colony needs to be supported by an endowment. The advisory board is in the process of establishing an endowment of between 12 and 14 million dollars. The distinguished writers and scholars will reside at the Mailer House, while those attending the colony will stay in nearby hotels and bed and breakfast. It is the desire of the colony to expand over the coming years to include other buildings in the surrounding area, creating a compound that will become the Norman Mailer Writers Colony. I have the hope that this book may stimulate your sense of our time and will even offer its marrow to all the years in which so many of us have met as friends and antagonists, as fools and philosophers, rich in our power to meditate on the perversities and wonders of our world. This is a book that nearly all of us have created in our own minds, each book vastly different, yet still related by the web of history and the river of becoming that we refer to by the most indefinable of words, the most mysterious word of them all, time, time. The advisory board and the Mailer family invite the participation of those who seek to support the arts and understand the significance of the Norman Mailer Writers' Colony. All inquiries should be addressed to Lawrence Schiller at the Norman Mailer Writers' Colony. Email lschiller, L-S-C-H-I-L-L-E-R, at mailerestate.com or 1-800-835-7853.